It's MasterChef. The only option today is to win. Searching for Britain's best amateur cook. Of course I won that semi-final place. Everyone does. It's a competition. 136 contestants who all believe they have undiscovered talent. I'm not going to let this dream go, no. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. It's quarter-final day, and the four heat winners are back. Our quarter-finalist is Stacey. Andrew. Emma. Jonty. Get in there. They've returned to fight for a coveted place in the semi-finals. Competitive drive has definitely come to another level now. I just want to get in the kitchen and show John and Greg what I've got up my sleeve. I really believe I can go on and win MasterChef. I've got the belief in myself and I think that's the most important thing. I've got the confidence. I know that I've got to raise my game. I've got a load more to give um, and I hope I've got what it takes. I've just got to pull something out of the bag and, uh, and really go for it. These guys are good enough to make it as quarter finalists, but who can raise it one more level? Who has the palette, who has the skill to take them into a semi-final? In this, the first of the tests, the four heat winners must show John and Greg they have both the ability and will to make it as a semi-finalist. After this, one of them will be sent home. We want them to succeed, so we're going to give them a choice. They can cook for us a piece of meat or a piece of fish. The meat recipe today is a steak with peppercorn sauce. Now, here's the difficult bit. This steak has to have a crispy outer and a medium rare inside, and that sauce has to be velvety, smooth, but with a good punch of pepper and a little sharpness of brandy. The fish recipe is pan-fried mackerel, crispy skin, and served with a classic mayonnaise. Rich with mustard, sour with vinegar, touch of lemon juice at the end. Now that is tough. This is about cookery skill, it's about knowledge, and it's about dealing with pressure. Everything that a MasterChef semi-finalist needs. First up, it's Sunderland PA Stacy, who dreams of running a 60s-styled cafe. In her heat, she impressed the judges with her classic British cooking. Full of flavour, full of skill. Stacey, fantastic. Mm, thanks. But she added too many elements to her dishes. I like the way you've cooked everything. I just don't like them all together. MasterChef means the absolute world to me. And Mr Scooter Alley for MasterChef, that is massive. They're only on once a year. So it, it's, it's absolutely huge. I can't put it into words, but it's huge. You have a choice. You can either cook a meat dish mm -hmm. or a fish dish. I would like to cook a meat dish, please. So, steak with a peppercorn sauce, crispy outside, medium rare inside, maximum 15 minutes. Yep. Stacey, cook. Thank you. Okay, so not panicking and waiting. Northeasterners are used to meat, potatoes and two veg on every plate. I've pulled that right back. I just want stuff on the plate that tastes well together. You've got five minutes left. Your steak is cooked perfectly. That addition of butter on top of it made it lovely and rich. You knew exactly what to do with deglazing the pan, but pepper is a spice. It needs to be fried. You just slipped up on not bringing that pepper alive in, with heat. We need to know why you feel you should progress on MasterChef. 
First of all, cooking to me is not just about putting food on a plate. It's the theatre of growing my own vegetables in my allotment, it's baking my own bread, it's the excitement of being the first in the fish market on a Saturday morning when the whole of Sunderland's asleep, I'm there at the crack of dawn, what's fresh? I know I've cited Fanny Craddock as one of my inspirations and I want to be that inspiration to the whole generation of kids who are growing up now. I know I can do it, I really believe in myself. <sighs> OK, Stacey, <laughs> thank you very much. so so badly brought up a few nerves have I done enough to get through um, and, and also excitement I'm actually buzzing I'm on cloud nine at the minute really really over the moon fashion buyer Emma's dream is to write cookbooks and open a restaurant with her brother in the heat Emma proved she had a good palate there are so many different flavors going on but they seem to be able to survive against each other but a lack of technical skill can let her down. It's completely collapsed, which is not what you're after. The more I cook, the more I enjoy it. It's just a massive part of my life. It's a really great way for me to be creative and experiment. A meat recipe or a fish recipe? I would like to cook the fish recipe. Pan fried mackerel with mayonnaise, 15 minutes, you cook. <laughs> Today is about me proving that I can cook under pressure, learn from the mistakes that I've made, and hopefully turn out really, really great dishes. You're halfway, Emma. very much. Quite a lot of mistakes here. Yeah. The mackerel should have been simply pan fried in a little bit of oil, let the skin go crispy, that's it. Not squeezed with huge amounts of lemon juice. Mayonnaise is thick and spreadable. Yeah. You've also made it with olive oil and it's made with vegetable oil. Not your strongest of rounds, is it, going no, into a quarter no, final? No, definitely not. I was really nervous. I, I can learn so much from doing this, and I just want to become a better, better chef. It's an intimidating thing to completely change your, your career when you're doing well in a job, and doing something like this would give me the opportunity to learn, to, to follow my dream in food. I just messed up massively. I was so nervous. I don't know why what told me to go for the fish. Um, yeah, I'm just really disappointed. Next up, it's property developer Andrew, whose ambition is to run a small hotel in the Scottish Highlands. He's cooked some excellent food inspired by his love of hunting and fishing. Lovely, smooth, creamy fish pate with the smoked salmon around the outside is delightful. But not everything was perfect. The livers are very, very rare. We have undercooked potatoes here. The competition is so important to me because I now realise what I actually want to do. I do actually want to be a chef. The meat, please. Go for it. I do want this to change my life, and, and um, I think MasterChef can help to get somewhere that uh, I've wanted to be for a very, very long time. Five minutes, Andrew. I know before I even cut into that steak, it's going to be rare, if not blue. It was cooked for about a minute on each side. It needs about two minutes on each side. There you are, my friend. One blue steak. The sauce itself, there's a hint of pepper in there, but the real flavour is that of white wine and garlic. 
Um, it's okay. Mm. But there's quite a lot of fundamental mistakes in there. The taste of that sauce is white wine. In fairness to you, you tasted it and tasted it and tasted it. You knew it wasn't right. Mm. You just didn't know how to make it right. Mm. Andrew, we know you love to cook. Mm. Why is it you feel you should be a semi-finalist? I do have a dream. I do want to succeed in that dream. And this is a chance for me to improve my life. Um, If I don't cook this afternoon, I will be very, very disappointed, especially off the back of that. Hopefully I'll get the chance to do that, and uh, if I do cook properly, they'll see what I can really do. Last up is interior architect Jonty, who showed a true flair for presentation. Stunning. Thank you very much. But didn't deliver on all levels. The pork has a salty exterior and it's moist, but that flavour and the flavour of the beetroot are the only two things I can taste. I'm a lot more determined than I've been before. It's 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 quarterfinals. Uh, it's a semi-final place. It's just got incredibly serious now. I'm going to challenge myself and go with the fish. Cook. Plenty of time. If I was to win this competition, it would be a clear sign that I'd probably been in the wrong industry and I should have been in food maybe a long time ago. You're halfway. Done? Finished. Presented beautifully, good technique, skin's nice and crispy, which is great, but your fish has been cooked for far too long. Your mayonnaise, again, technically, almost there. It needs vinegar at the start to be able to give it some depth and some acid. There is a semi-final place up for grabs. Why do you feel you should have that place? My earliest memory, uh, which when I was seven years old, I'm cooking with, uh, with my aunt Jill. And I've been cooking ever since then, continually. And that's, I'm 27 now, that's two decades of cooking. So I think it's those 20 years of dedication that I put to this as an hour to cook that qualifies me to get this next place. John T, thank you very much. Off you go. Thank you. I went for the more technical dish. I challenged myself, but I could pull it off. Um, haven't, and hopefully it's just enough to get me through it. One person leaves us. Who stays? Who goes? Oh, for me, Stacey was the star performer out of those four. I mean, a medium rare steak cooked absolutely perfectly. Good sauce, not without fault, but still very, very confident cook. I love her passion. I love what she says. She is a star turn, John. I think she should well and truly stay in this competition. John T started off really well. He got the consistency of the mayonnaise absolutely perfect. He got the skin on that fish crispy. But he overcooked the fish and that mayonnaise needed more flavour. For me, John T was halfway there where the other two failed completely. Emma, wow, what a tragedy that was. The idea of those bits of fish almost boiled in lemon juice, huge amounts of parsley and a very, very failed mayonnaise. No acid in it, use just olive oil. It must have been nerve job. We've seen her deliver some big, big flavour. I don't think this food is beyond her. I think the occasion got to her today. Andrew's passionate. He really wants to do this. Andrew cooked the steak, but cooked it rare, almost blue, with a white wine and garlic sauce rather than a pepper sauce. He had no idea how to make that sauce, no idea at all. The one saving grace was he kept on tasting it and he knew it wasn't right. Decision time. And a tough decision, I think.
person leaving us is Emma. Sorry, Emma. Thank you. Well, I kind of knew that was going to happen. I'm feeling disappointed, obviously, because um, I know I really messed up in that task. So I think I'm going to have a few days off cooking order some takeaways, um, but I'm going to carry on cooking, you know, I've still got my dreams and still things that I want to do. Well done. Well done, guys. Now you three have to cook for your lives. If you want a semi-final place, you have to really turn it on. One hour, one semi-final place, Let's cook. The contestants have one hour to cook their best two-course menu. Today I'm doing a um, tenderloin of pork on creamed leeks with a peas pudding and I'm going to do like a, a white wine mustard sauce. And your dessert? My dessert is going to be a spiced plum crumble with a vanilla cream. Are you able to take your food up that one notch to actually guarantee yourself a semi-final place? I hope so, yeah. It's really tasty. These are the dishes that I've grown up with and as such, this is the style I want to bring to this competition to best represent my culinary skill. We have pork with peas pudding. Can Stacey put the modern touch on such a regional classic dish? Twenty minutes gone. What are your two dishes today? Um, today I'm going to do uh, seared scallops on a bed of wild samphire, served with uh, crayfish tails and a smoky garlic butter sauce. And the other course is a Mediterranean fish stew with a herb crusted halibut. How big is your desire to prove you you're a good cook? Oh, it's massive, absolutely massive. Well, I'm desperate to show you that I can cook, but uh, if I get the flavours right and if it's cooked properly, then uh, then I think that should be enough to uh, to go through. Good luck. Thank Good you. luck, mate. Andrew got into this position by the skin of his teeth, and I think he's got a lot to prove. Do like the sound of the two fish dishes. Big question mark is, can he now deliver when it really matters? What are you going to cook for us? Uh, today I'm doing uh, monkfish masala with spiced lentils, uh, followed by um, my own sort of strawberry dish, which is a bittersweet symphony of strawberries and cream. Over on your bench there, you have a, a lot of apparati. Yeah. Well, these are all bits and pieces I'm mainly going to use for the pudding dish. Some syringes so you can inject flavour into the strawberries. Interesting that you focus on flavour. That's what we want from you. We know that he does presentation for today. John T has to deliver flavour. Monkfish masala with spice lentils. There's no way anybody who can seriously cook cannot get flavour in a dish like that. Ten minutes left. Just 30 seconds. This is last touches only. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, your time is up. Step away from your bench. Property developer Andrew's quest for a semi-final spot begins with his seared scallops on a bed of wild samphire served with crayfish tails and smoky garlic butter sauce. Really rich, salty scallop and sour samphire sitting underneath, all bound together by very, very rich butter and lots and lots of garlic. But for me, it needs lemon juice to be able to just help the rest of it come alive a bit. Saying that, I like it. Thank you. I think that's a really, really pretty plate. Thank you.
we are a squeeze of lemon juice mm -hmm. away from a celebration here. I mean, those bits of that that I think are majestic. I am really impressed, and I think you should be very pleased with yourself. Thank you. Andrew's second dish is a Mediterranean fish stew with herb-crusted halibut. It starts off with those fresh herbs and the subtlety of the halibut and the richness of the prawn, but unfortunately, in the background, I get tomato sauce flavour, like ketchup. Yeah, there is ketchup in it. Aha! It just whacks you across the top of the head as if you've just had a hot dog with tomato sauce on it. <laughs> I don't mm. mind the start flavours of sweet tomato. We are a spoonful of flavour away from something magnificent on both dishes. Thank you. Thank you. Is it enough to make you a semi-finalist? I'm pleased. You know, I am pleased with what I've done. And still not right, so there's more to learn. Sunderland PA Stacey's first course is roasted tenderloin of pork on creamed leeks with peas pudding and a white wine and mustard sauce. If you're going to serve food, this austere, that's making quite a statement. And that statement has got to be, eat me, I'm delicious. Salty, smoky, delicious peas pudding running into soft, creamy, buttery leeks with a mustard sauce with an absolute punch and beautifully soft pork seasoned wonderfully. It tastes absolutely great. Thank you. The pork is cooked perfectly well. Its flavours are warm and comforting. It's absolutely delightful. It, it, it packs a punch beyond its weight. Stacy's dessert is spiced plum crumble with vanilla cream and plum syrup. To have your taste buds go to the brink of sharpness, where you almost go, and then to have it dragged back in with sweetness is a real delight. Lovely flavours. Sweet on top, sour underneath, and rich with spice. For me, the most exciting part of this dish is that vanilla cream sitting on top of that little reduced plum syrup, which is really heavy with cinnamon, really like Christmas, and really exciting as a flavour. I think your food is good, Stacey. Is it special enough? Interior architect John T's semi-final hopes rest on his monkfish masala with a herb crust and spicy lentils. Well presented, good looking dish. Well executed, well thought out. For me, I just like a lot more flavour. I like the bit of spice, I like the coconut against it. I think that's beautiful. I think some more flavour in those lentils. Jonty's dessert is made up of a strawberry sorbet, separate strawberry compotes mixed with champagne and balsamic vinegar, strawberries injected with balsamic vinegar, and a strawberry crumble. No, 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 no. That's really bitter, really sharp. In a dessert that features strawberries, the only real strawberry flavour is coming from the crumble, and that is the best tasting thing on here. Your food looks fantastic. But the issue is the flavour of the strawberry is being masked by the sourness of other ingredients. Look, I great respect for you, I really do. And I think you've done a huge amount of work. Do you think you've done enough to guarantee yourself a semi-final place? I really don't know at this point. I really don't know. These guys really want it and they've pushed themselves very hard. Completely different styles of cooking, completely different approach to food altogether, all three of them. John T and I have some fabulous skill, and he really can do a wonderful job with the appearance of his food. Because John T makes his food look so fantastic, 
you can't understand why he can't make it taste good. That monkfish should have been crunchy with real depth of spice and a bit of heat, and it wasn't. The desserts, wow, I haven't seen a dessert like that in ages. I mean, what, 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 what he's attempting there is, is experimental food at the highest level. I think it takes years and years and years to, uh, to really master the art of seriously good cuisine and understand the balance of those flavours. That's just something I've got to continue to, to practise. Rarely do you see a cook as good as Stacey. To be able to take what is real good British family classics and to pump that much flavour into them, I think, is great. Soft pork, great texture, really lovely creamy leeks and the sharpness of that white wine against the mustard. Perfect balance. The crumble, for me, the real joy on that plate was that condensed plum sauce sitting underneath the vanilla cream. That, for me, was the sort of thing, that glimmer that I see and think, wow, that is fantastic. I am a rustic home cook, I do do British classics, and I think sometimes they're better represented in a more rustic style, but I do have to up my game. This is Master Chef, this is not home cook, and this is not me cooking for my husband. I've got to up my game. I'll tell you what, Andrew had a point to prove today. For me, he's proved it. Those little scallops sitting on top of that sour samphire, the crayfish tails and that rich buttery sauce, great dish, really, really good dish. That halibut with a crust on the top, for me, that sauce should have been a Mediterranean sunshine but instead it was damp from tomato ketchup. But his food is going in the right direction. He is developing as a good cook in front of our eyes. I did always say that I was going to try and push the boat out um, for that semi-final place, and uh, so, yeah, I'm very pleased with them. You and I know how tough this competition really is. Who has it? Who's got that little spark, that gem, that can take them all the way? semi-finalist is Stacy. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Well done, well done. I can't believe it, I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. I'm feeling disappointed, but I was happy with what I'd done, and at the end of the day, I'm not through, but I can walk out with my head held high. Gutted, obviously, but what I've been trying to do is deliver Michelin star dishes, and you really, really need to know so much about food and so much about flavour. <laughs> Sorry. Semi finalist. Cheers. This is the most important thing I've ever done. Feel the bits that John and Greg think I've got a palate and think I can cook. I'm going to go for my dream. This is what I want. I'm halfway there. I'm just going to give it everything I've got. I can't keep my arms still. <laughs>